All right, scholars, in this video, we're going to take a look at the first law of thermodynamics, which is actually a restatement of the law of conservation of energy. You should remember that in mechanical systems, such as our swinging pendulum, the mechanical energy of a system can be increased by doing work on it. So the equation is change in mechanical energy equals the work done on it. Now we're looking at thermodynamic systems, for example, gas molecules. And this says that the energy of a system can be increased by doing work on it or by adding heat to it. That's the additional element here. We have a new symbol for internal energy. And remember, internal energy is just the energy of all the gas molecules added up. The symbol is delta U. Same symbol for work, capital W. Symbol for heat is Q. And all these units are in joules. So um, this part here, I'm not so concerned that you have this part in your concept catalog, although you're free to pause it and write it down. But the next part here, definitely, we want to define the first law of thermodynamics. It says the internal energy of a system can be changed by heat flowing in or out of the system and by work being done on or by the system. We usually see this equation written two ways. Here's the first way. Delta U equals Q plus W on the system. This is all measured in joules in the SI system, or calories in the English. We can also write it this way. The only difference is that we're saying minus work by the system. In other words, if the gas molecules are doing the work by pushing on something, that's work by the system of gas molecules. And as they do that work, their energy is going to decrease. Whereas this is work on the system. And I'm going to do a demonstration tomorrow, first period, you've already seen this, where I take gas molecules and I do work on them by compressing them. And we can see that I did increase the temperature of those molecules, therefore increasing the internal energy. In the lab that you did with the FET lab, you should also be able to see that when you do work on the system by pushing the wall against the molecules, you were able to increase their internal energy. The other way of increasing the the other way of increasing their internal energy was to add heat, Q. So you should make sure you clearly have defined these variables as shown on the bottom here. Let's take a look at this diagram here. We have a cylinder. This is kind of like the FET lab, or it's kind of like the piston that I showed first period. Gas molecules inside. This um, the cylinder has a piston, and that's the part that can move up and down. Down if we want to compress the gases, up if those gases are expanding. So let's do this. Draw arrows for heat being absorbed. So heat being absorbed, that means the heat's flowing into it. And I'm going to draw that as a Q coming in. What you should do is in your concept catalog, you should draw a sketch of this piston and cylinder. The cylinder is the part on the outside. The piston is the part that goes up and down. Um, you don't necessarily need to write all these words, although it might be a good idea. So this is heat coming in. And this would be heat being released. So we'll call this positive Q. We'll call this negative Q. And this is kind of like positive Q is using the fire in the FET lab. Negative Q is using the ice. Now the other part of this is work being done on or by the gas. And for that, we can show that if work is being done on the system, this would be work on because we're pushing down on the gas. Or if the gas is pushing up, that would be work by. And um, we think of work by the system as negative because it's going to take away from the energy of the molecules. Work on the system gives energy to those molecules. That's positive work. OK, let's go to the next slide here. So in the next slide here, we have um, four different situations here. And you should make sketches of these also in your notes. On the left side, we have what's called isovolumetric, which means that there is no change in volume. You might remember from geometry, I, the meaning of iso. And think about isosceles triangles, means same sides. Isovolumetric means same volume. So all it means is that the piston is not moving up or down. So the work being done is equal to zero. 
If we have heat coming in, how is that going to change the internal energy of the molecules? Will it be a positive change, getting hotter, or a negative change, getting cooler? And hopefully you recognize that that would be a positive change. So we can add in here that that's positive. If we have heat leaving, that means that the gases are getting cooler. That would be a negative change. On the right side, we have what's called an adiabatic situation, which means that there is no heat flowing in or out. You can think of it as like a, think of it like a perfectly insulated cylinder. Or you can think of it like a process that's happening so fast that there's no time for any heat to go in or out. So whatever work is being done on the gas is going to go directly into changing the internal energy. If we are doing positive work on the gas, will the change in energy be positive or negative? Hopefully you recognize that it will be a positive change. Oops, let's bring that back. So that would be positive. And if the gas molecules are doing the work, then they're going to be getting colder as they lose energy to do the work. That's a negative change. Okay. Funny words here. Adiabatic. Isovolumetric. And um, we'll use those words a bit in class as well. Okay. So next slide. Do a little example problem. You should write this example down, this example problem in your concept catalog. If 300 joules of heat are added to a system, and the system does 100 joules of work, how much is the change in internal energy of the system? Make a sketch. All right, so we can make a little sketch. It looks kind of like this. Here is the cylinder. Here is the piston that can move up and down. I'll try to draw it like, maybe make them look like actual walls so they have some thickness. Okay, and 300 joules of heat are added to the system. So let's draw that as heat coming in. And this would be Q. It's going to be positive because it's heat coming in. It's going to be 300 joules. And the system does 100 joules of work. What direction is that going to point? And hopefully you recognize that that's going to be pointing up. Work is going to be 100 joules of work. It's the system doing the work, so that's going to take away energy. It's going to be a negative 100 joules. So how did the temperature, how did the delta U change inside? The delta U would be 300 in, 100 out, leaves 200 change in the inside. If we want to think about using an equation for this, we could say delta U equals Q minus work by the system, 300 joules minus 100 joules equals 200 joules. Really simple arithmetic. And this is what conservation of energy is all about. You don't lose or gain any energy, it's just flowing. So it's all really just a name of keeping track of where it's going. Okay, let's take a look 